The ancient city of Amman, capital of the Hassamite kingdom of Jordan, clings to 19 rolling hills. Amman is the country's political, cultural and commercial center. The city has also become a safe haven for an estimated 500,000 Iraqi refugees fleeing violence and economic strife in their homeland after the 2003 US-led invasion. Among this flood of refugees are some 15,000 Iraqi Catholics, mostly of the Assyrian and Chaldean rites. Sarkis Hambasum, along with his wife and son, have recently arrived from Baghdad. They share this small two-room flat with his parents and his brother. Last month, they have also welcomed two women who were robbed as they crossed the border from Iraq into Jordan. I was a professor at the University of Baghdad. A few months ago, I received several threatening phone calls. At first, I simply ignored them. With subsequent calls, the threats got serious. They said, you are a Christian, you are an infidel. You have two options, either you become Muslim or you leave. But if you stay, we will kill you. They gave us 72 hours. I didn't want to take any chances, so we packed what we could and left Baghdad. Sarkis and his family have applied for asylum to the United States. However, the chances to emigrate together with his parents and brother are very small, as American immigration officials view their cases as separate. Because Jordan is not a signatory to the 1951 UN Refugee Convention, Iraqis living here are defined as guests. This means that Iraqis do not have a clear legal status or the right to work. They don't receive health care and their children cannot go to public school. This situation can drag out for many years as they wait for potential countries of resettlement to respond to their application. Father Halil Yar runs the Messengers of Peace, a Catholic NGO which aids Iraqi families during their time of transition, regardless of their faith. With donations collected during Sunday services, he's able to provide food packages to about 50 families every week. It's very difficult. They are living in a fear because they know that any moment they could be sent back to Iraq. And to be sent to Iraq, that means to be sent to the death, to the big question mark, because they left everything in Baghdad. So really they are suffering, these people. Every child has the right to live a decent way to be educated, to have fun. He cannot assume the, the responsibility of uh, the war or the, any kind of problems in his country. We try to help the kids to go to the school. We have 120 pupils that we pay for them the scholarity in different uh, schools, in different uh, localities in Amman, in Jordan. I think for the next generation, important to conserve their faith, the Iraqi language, Arab, Arab language as Chaldean language. And to one day we like to back all Christian in Iraq. We don't like to lose Christian from Iraq. The large number of Iraqi refugees in Oman are also aided by various Catholic organizations, such as Aid to the Church in Need and the Jesuit Refugee Service which provide non-formal education and consultations with social work professionals. They also organize a soccer team. The majority of the people that we serve are really in a, a state of limbo in that they have hopes to be resettled in the period in which they will be in that state of limbo. It can range from a couple months to six, seven, eight years sometimes. Their most important services are, number one, to provide education, skills, that could be of use in the country of resettlement. English language skills, computer literacy, for those who hope to be in France, some, we, have, we have a French class. Just as important is really to create a space or an environment where Iraqis can find a sense of belonging. 
talking to one doctor who said, this is like the old Iraq. It didn't matter what faith or, or, or background that you were coming from, but more importantly, that, that everyone got along and, and there, was, there was just a, a greater sense of community. I receive a letter from a friend of mine in Europe, sometimes sending 50 euros for the kids. When I read the letter in the church, uh, some of them start crying. Because at least there is somebody thinking and caring for them. So for me, the most important thing is these families to support them, just to know that your brothers in, in faith are suffering. And they need your help. They need your prayer. They need your support. <laughs> Let's go.